Coming to you live from the Business Radio X studio, it's Franchise Marketing Radio. Brought to you by IDS, an award-winning digital marketing agency that delivers integrated marketing solutions for franchisers, franchisees, and franchise development teams. Learn why over 75 brands depend on IDS's team of dedicated marketers and client service professionals to deliver a strong ROI on their marketing investment. Go to idsfranchisemarketing.com for a complimentary digital audit and consultation. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Franchise Marketing Radio. I'm Rob Ganley, your host, and I am here today, and I love these types of businesses. We talk to a lot of people in a lot of industries. I love fitness, and I love health and wellness, So, because I always learn something, and I need to keep learning. So it's good to have, I have Terry Haroff. She's the Director of Global Franchise Development at, wait a minute, Workout Anytime. And I don't want to say any other fitness brand that sounds similar. So Workout Anytime is the brand. It's great to have you, Terry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's great to have you. So tell me a little bit about Workout Anytime. You know, how did the brand come to be? You're a fitness brand, but tell us a little bit of how you serve folks and, and how you came to be involved with the brand. Sure. So the founders founders of our company, John Q and Steve Strickland, they started the company 22 years ago. And they didn't get into they didn't open work at any time to franchise. They just thought that they had a they had a great idea, which was to open 24 hour clubs. And all you have to pay back in that back in those days is their big marketing message was 24 hours a day for $24 a month for 24 months. And so that's what the marketing message was. And they opened their first location in Douglasville, Georgia, 22 years ago. And that location is still open today, all these years later. It's actually our smallest location. It's just under 5,000 square feet, but it's still open today and it's still making money, which is awesome. And they added to their to their mix of clubs and they got up to eight locations that they owned personally. And the clubs were doing really, really, really well. Uh, the, 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 the 24 hour, you know, $24 a month for 24 months really resonated with a lot of people. And we had several members who spoke to John and Steve about wanting to own a work at any time. And that's literally how we got into franchising. So we, you know, it happened organically. So five years in, they started franchising and they brought on board a gentleman whose name, his name is Randy Trotter, who's also a partner with Work at Any Time now, but they brought him on board just to help with franchising because he had franchised several different, uh, been involved with franchising several different brands. And so he helped mm-hmm. introduce them to an attorney. They got the FDD together, a lot of, you know, and then of course mm-hmm. started franchising. And we did grow organically. We, we opened our first franchises here in Georgia, and then we moved to uh, Tennessee and then to North Carolina, South Carolina. And now we are in 22 states from Portland, Oregon to Portland, Maine. We're also international. We've got locations in Central America, in Honduras, as well as in Costa Rica. We're actually speaking to a group right now who's interested in opening in Spain. We're speaking to another group who's looking at opening in Israel, which is interesting. So lots of growth, both domestically and internationally. Yeah, that's exciting. I've got a lot of questions. I'm the, uh, you shared a lot of really good stuff there. I wanted to uh, first start, just wanted to ask you real quick, because you opened with a great, so that the initial marketing that you did was 24, the 24, 24, 24, something very memorable, right? Right. Let me ask you about that message, because that's kind of a little bit about your brand, like like the the the, the easy access of it. And I know other brands, some people do this, some don't. But it's a it's a twenty four seven operation, right? So you can go there and work out whenever it's convenient. Is that right? That's part of twenty four seven three sixty five. And um, we do, of course, have staffed hours. Um, but the beauty of our of our business is, you know, say your quote unquote opener has a flat tire and can't get to the gym on time. Well, it's business as usual because your members have got access to the club. Um, 24-7, 365. And a lot of people join our gym because of the fact that we are open 24 hours a day. Not that they really come at crazy times. Most people do come, you know, normal gym times. 
Um, but people really do like the fact that they know that they can work out at three in the morning if they want to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I know that's unique, right? And I know 22 years ago, it would have probably really been somewhat unique. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And that's what I'm saying about that message. It must have really resonated well and, and helped, you know, really make you guys unique. And that's, of course, what led to the success in such a short time when you really break down what you described. Those early years were pretty quick and then they, you guys became a franchise, but it was all that early success. And yeah, just thinking 22 years ago, what that message looked like compared to that today. So tell me a little bit about the brand. I mean, cause when you, when you hear the name, it, it, you know, it's, it's obviously. Uh, letting you know that it's a flexible anytime kind of thing. And so tell me about that brand and how does that message work today? And is there, you know, other things you've added, other unique angles that make it special today that you just notice that your market needs, right? As things have evolved. Well, you've got to evolve. I mean, you've got to stay fresh and um, and we listen to our consumers, you know, so we there are things that we add on. We now offer infrared saunas, which we never used to do that before. Uh, we've got red light therapy. Um, we've got, we, before used to have hydro massages. Now we've got the hydro lounges, which are more comfortable. They're easier, easier to get in and out of. Um, we've got Styku, which measures your body fat and, uh, and, and just a variety of different amenities that can help our members really truly get into the best shape they've ever been in. And, um, and we, we consider ourselves the best workout per square foot in the industry. Um, so we use top of the line matrix, uh, commercial grade equipment, um, so we've got fantastic strength equi- equipment, fantastic cardio equipment, but the big thing that people are looking for now is recovery. And so we also have a great recovery zone, um, for our members. And that's something, uh, you know, that, that we evolved to, um, yeah. when, when our founders first opened work at any time, they, they both had been, had been in the business for many, many years. John Q actually was my first boss when I got into the business in college, he was the, the vice president of American Fitness Center here in, well, there, there was actually a big brand based in the Southeast, but I worked at the at American Fitness Center here in Georgia um, in college. And um, and so I've got big box experience, you know, with the racquetball courts and swimming pools and huge aerobic rooms and daycare and, you know, tracks, indoor tracks and everything. And they decided they wanted to simplify it. And that's how they came up with work at any time. And they said, you know what? you know, based on experience, you know, most people, what they're looking for in a gym is strength equipment and cardio equipment. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we have. And we've got the best of it. Um, Now we, you know, we've got the recovery area, which is awesome. We also offer personal training and personal training is a whole nother business within the business. And, you know, I would say one of the things that probably separate us from a lot of, of other brands is, not just the fact that we offer it, but we teach our franchisees how to offer it and how to do it properly. So the training program is actually called PPT, Profitable Personal Training. And we've got two, our two VPs of personal training are unbelievable. We actually met them because they were doing personal training for some of our, our corporate locations and they developed the whole training program and did uh, did incredibly well. And so we wanted to take, you know, a lot of times with your corporate locations, you do your beta tests, you try things out. If things go well, you roll them into your franchise. And that's exactly what we did with Brandon and Crystal, who are VPs. And they train the whole, you know, they train our entire uh, group or all of our franchisees and their, their um, for, uh, personal trainers who work within, within the locations. And they do a fantastic job. And uh, we're seeing co- during COVID when we had some extra time to work on different things, one of the yeah. things that we really put a huge emphasis on was our personal training and the training of our personal training. And we're seeing just incredible numbers across the board on the personal training revenue alone. Um, and then, of course, you've got your membership base. You've got your members who are paying their um, their monthly monthly dues to be able to have access to the club. And, you know, the nice thing for our franchisees is the recurring revenue, the fact that they know that they've got X amount of dollars coming in every single solitary month, whether the members come in or not, you know, based yeah. whereas like in a restaurant franchise, someone's got to get up and say, I want a burger today or I want a pizza yeah. With yeah, this, constantly. You're, the money, yeah, the, the money is coming in monthly, which is awesome. And and the, the segment that we're in is the high value, low cost gym segment. 
And uh, what that means is, you know, the equipment that we offer is top of the line. It's, it's, it's incredible. When people walk into our gym, they're blown away. They get the wow factor yeah. because the, the, the colors are so vibrant and beautiful. The equipment is, is so nice. There's so, there so much of it. Um, and so, you know, we, to join a gym, a one club membership, it's only $19 a month to yeah. join, to join all of our gyms and get the, 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 the premium amenities that's only $10 more. So only $29.99 a month. And so, wow. you know, people are like, wow, all of this for that. Yeah. Yeah. And what we do find out find is that, you know, if you're not using your membership, maybe as much as you want to, um, typically the members will, you know, as long as we're doing our job, which is keeping our clubs clean and sanitized, keeping our equipment well-maintained and hiring friendly service oriented people. If we do our job, then typically members are going to stay even if another club opens or maybe if they're not using their their club their the membership as much as they want to because they want to know that they will that they can be able to use it once right. their schedule gets less crazy. They're, they don't want to have to start over again. And you know, exactly. unless unless the pain is great enough when you talk about some of those high value high cost the ones you just mentioned earlier with the bit that the huge and I've enjoyed a few of those here and there, but when you're not consistent, boy, that, that number seems a lot bigger. <laughs> so, no doubt about it. No doubt. And I know yeah. a lot of people in the industry on all, on all different levels. And, um, yeah. and listen, you know, there are some big boxes that, you know, people, they want, They're, they've got families, they want the pools, they want the, all the, all the other stuff. But, um, and, or, and some people, they like the, you know, they like the, the different classes that, that, you know, the boutique types of places. And that's, and that's yeah. great. But a bulk, you know, the bulk of what most people are looking for is great cardio equipment, yeah. great strength equipment. Um, and we do offer personal training and also small group classes. So we're able to accommodate those people looking for, you know, those added services. Yeah, no, I love it. I think it's just the industry itself evolves and learns, right? And people change. I was also... In, when I brought up what I said earlier is in marketing, there is a sort of, a, if you look backwards, you could see how messages change because the audience has changed in the way they receive them and they're used to them. And what right. was cool then isn't cool anymore. It's like, all right, that's expected or right. that's normal. Um, but what you said, a couple of things just from a business standpoint. So I know in franchising, you know, getting getting your lo local business owner, uh, getting them going, getting them started is important. Obviously, then growing that business to its full potential or whatever that goal is has a lot to do with, I think, what you were saying. And that is, you know, the speed at which you can acquire new folks to come in, which if the barrier to entry is low, high value, low cost, seems like that would be a quick decision, easy to do. And then it sticks, right? So that right. base sticks with you and you build it. So that in, in your business, it's, having that 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 base and building it slowly over time and hopefully i guess at some point you're maybe at capacity but i'm sure it's hard to ever get there you know and we've never you do, we've you never add locations right yeah, like, we've yeah. never been at capacity we've never yeah. said oh my gosh we got to stop selling memberships ever um yeah. and we've got you know we've got clubs that, that have got you know more than four thousand members um so you know but, but the cool thing with another silver lining of uh, of covid is yeah. um, flexibility that people have. And mm -hmm. especially people, you know, working from home, some work, you know, working virtually working, going into the office for the yeah. people that are working from home, we're seeing them at the gym a whole lot more now and, and a lot more regularly, um, but at different times. And so you used to, you know, when people didn't have as much flexibility, you had your early morning workouts, your lunchtime workouts, and then your after work workouts. And now we're seeing people working out all day long, you know, all different hours, you know, which is really kind of cool. And yeah. you know, those people that are working from home, they need, they want this social, uh, social interaction. They want to get out of their house and get moving. And so coming to the gym, you know, is a, is a, <laughs> is a perfect thing for them to do. And typically yeah. our, our gyms are typically located close to residential. You know, we're yeah. typically in a shopping center that's anchored by maybe a grocery store, you know, somewhere that you're going to re re regularly visit or a Dollar General or a Goodwill or a Big Lots. And all of those places typically are close to residential locations. So yeah. um, so that's the, you know, COVID is definitely, um, we had our we had our best year yet ever in 2022, both in membership um, growth and in, and in franchise growth. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, that, that speaks to me, Yeah, you know, like I, I'm very virtual in my profession now. Um, and I speak to people like this uh, virtually a lot. I have lots right. of friends yeah. that way, but that human contact, right? So it's like, I'm looking for ways to do that. And the gym is one of those ways. And I do look forward to that, you know? No um, doubt about it. And I tell yeah. you, you know, a couple of things from a marketing standpoint, um, something that something that happens now much more than it did, you know, years ago, are the number of people who actually join online. And, um, you know, so many people are so used to shopping online and doing their research and going to a website. And we're now 24% of our members are joining online now, which is awesome. Awesome for our franchisees because they come in and they're like, oh, wow, I've already got six new members on the books for today. That's awesome. So that's, you know, that's that's one thing that's changed back, you know, from the early days when we would send out postcards and, you know, TV advertising and radio advertising. Well, marketing has changed so much. So much of what we do is online um, yeah. because changes can be made so quickly and everyone's looking online, to, you know, for, for things to purchase and for decisions, to, you know, for information um, on things that they're interested in so that they can make a decision on that. So it's, yeah. um, it's really, it's been a game changer for our, for our industry. And because yeah. we are so affordable, people, feel comfortable joining online because it's, it's not like you're spending 500 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's, it's, it's a low risk uh, to entry kind of idea. And I was going to ask you that. Uh, yeah. is, so if I'm starting a brand new fitness business, right. You, you know, you're it, high value, uh, high value, low cost. Um, and in really any, any fitness business, but I would assume that social marketing and and search marketing, those two ideas where people are searching for things, solutions, yep. ideas, whatever, or they learn about it through social. Obviously, the fitness industry is a leader in a lot of the social side of things because it's such a social thing, can be at least. Right. Um, tell me a little bit about how you do that when you're, you're launching a franchise. What What is sort of the process of, these are the most important ways to attack this. This is sort of, no, that's kind of going down a rabbit trail. We don't need to worry that much. But I, I sure you simplify that because a lot of folks aren't experts at social marketing or search marketing, but how do you approach that for, for a new owner? Like what, what are the important things that you yeah, have to Yeah, well, I tell you, you know, one of the reasons, the biggest reason I say to own a franchise is, you know, when, when we talk about work at any time specifically, you know, we started this 22 years ago. We've made the mistakes over the years so that you don't have to. And we've got proven process, processes and proven procedures. But most importantly, we've got a playbook. And we've got a playbook that uh, for every aspect of our business. Um, and if our franchisees will follow the playbook, they can do very, very, very well. And, you know, in, in my business, you know, I've, I'm very, very forthcoming. My whole team is um, as, as far as providing information. And, you know, our, my job is to give you all the information that you need to make a great decision. And part of the due diligence that our franchisees go through is talking to current franchisees, talking uh -huh. to people who are doing what they're considering doing. And, yeah. you know, and I want them to ask those questions. You know, tell me about the support that you get from the franchisor. Tell me about the real estate process. Tell me about your pre-sales. Tell me about your grand opening. Tell me about the marketing and how involved, you know, your, the franchisor is. And we have a, a, a fantastic marketing department. And then we've got uh, a creative agency and a PR agency that also are part of our team. And they all work together, um, wow. both for the national marketing regional marketing and then local store marketing. And, um, yeah. and we're very, you know, when we have groups come in for discovery day, you know, we tell them, listen, you know, you're not just going to be marketing just for pre-sales and grand opening. Marketing is something that you've got to continuously do. Right. Um, you know, sometimes you see franchisees who, you know, they're doing really, really well and they're making lots of money and they start thinking, well, golly, I don't need to market anymore. I've got this many members and, you know, things are going so great. And that is, that's, that's, that's true. But you, you got to stay top of mind. People move in, people move out. You got to stay out there all the time. And marketing, you know, comes in lots of different, you know, there's lots of different ways to market. Um, yeah. 
you know, one of the ways from a Fran Dev standpoint, one of the things that we're doing um, is our four walls market. Um, it's amazing how many members we get, excuse me, how many franchisees we get who were members first. And they, they, they met us, they, they joined the gym, they looked around, they said, wow, I could see owning one of these gyms. I mean, Callie, yeah. you know, you know, only three to four employees. Um, you know, it's not, it's not this huge. I can, you know, I can see it being able to own and operate this. And a lot of my franchisees, oh, 60% of my franchisees own multiple locations. And a lot of these franchisees do this in conjunction to other businesses that they, that they own. Um, I've got a franchisee that's got 21 McDonald's franchisees. They're wow. purchasing their sixth location where I just sent them out pa- uh, paperwork today. Matter of fact, um, I've got an interesting story. Uh, our mm-hmm. largest franchisee, um, his name is Jerry Pugh and EJ Williams. And Jerry was uh-huh. a member in Cookville, Tennessee. And Jerry is a serial entrepreneur. Um, and he's actually got an agriculture business. And he's got these huge pieces of equipment and they start in South Florida, Homestead, Florida, and they go all the way down the East Coast and they harvest green beans. That's what they do. And so, uh, so Jerry called us and he said, Hey, you know, called the franchise department and said, Hey, I was looking for a location in Homestead, Florida and I couldn't find one. And I've got a second house here. And I think you guys would really do really, really well here. You know, yeah. you guys should open one here. So we have a software package called Buxton and Buxton lets me look at literally every city across the country. And I can see population and competition and demographics and growth. And we use this to put to, to determine territories that are going to make sense for our franchisees. We also use it to make sure that we don't open too close to other franchisees. So there's not cannibalization. Right. We're able to see active members and well, it's, it's a, it's a fantastic tool. And uh, so we ran the Buxton report and we said, Jerry, we agree with you. We think Homestead would be a great location for a workout anytime. Why don't you open one? And he laughed and he said, great talking to you. Have a great life. And uh, ended up hanging up the phone, but thought about it. And he called us back about two weeks later. And sure enough, he opened his first location in Homestead, Florida. And he now has 21 locations in six states. So yeah. he is just crushing it. Um, and yeah. a lot, like I said, a lot of our franchisees, the way they're, they're they become familiar with us is by being members. So we put a tremendous emphasis on our four walls marketing to make sure that those people working out in our gyms know that there's an opportunity for them to own their own workout anytime. Yeah, that's important. I mean, the localized market, the awareness of opportunity like that still, even though franchising is, I think, pretty in our faces, uh, we know about franchises, but there's something about being reminded, like if I were at a place I loved, and they said, there's opportunities. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Oh, I didn't think of it that way. Right. Um, even though I know, yeah, people buy franchises, they invest, they start them. Like, but you don't go that. I think just letting people know, right? Letting them. Well, it gets, you is, know what? It gets, it gets the wheels going. That's what it does. And it's, and, listen, and timing is everything. You know, some, some, someone may be a member and five years down the road, we have another, we have another father son team. And yeah. the son actually was a trainer for us with work at any time and did yeah. that for several years and wanted to own his own location. He saw, you know, how well the owners of the, of the location he was training at, how well they were doing. So he got his father to partner up with them. So they opened their first location and, um, and the dad, Bill ended up spending a lot, a lot of time in his son's location and really he went through the training that we offer. We have a whole academy that, you know, that are all of our franchise partners go through. And he went through the, to the academy because he wanted to be able to inspect what he, what he expected. And then he ended up retiring like two years in from, he was, had a big career in printing and said, you know what? I want to own my own gym. And he and his wife were going to retire up in LJ, Georgia. So we ran a Buxton report to see, you know, how LJ looked as far as, you know, the demographics and population, competition, growth, all that good stuff looked yeah. great. So sure enough, he opened his, his location. He's been there now almost three years. So his son has his locations and now Bill has his location and he's, and he loves it. And, yeah. and, and that's another group of people that we see a lot that reach out to us a lot are people who, you know, they're, they're going to be retiring in the next few years from whatever business they're in. They feel yeah. like they're too young to stop working, but this time around, they want to do something that they love and something that they're passionate about. And, um, 
And a lot of our franchisees, you know, we don't we don't say that this is an absentee owner business because it's not. You've got to be involved. Yeah. Um, and the people who are passionate about this business, people who are passionate about giving back, I mean, truly, this is a business where you're giving back. This is a business that literally everybody in the entire world needs and almost everybody can afford it. I mean, what a beautiful thing that is. And, um, and that, that old saying, you know, do something you love and you'll never work a day. And I've had so many franchisees tell me that and how it's fun, how they love this. You know, they're making a difference. They're in a, they're in a business that they really are passionate about. Uh, and, um, and, and Hey, to be able to do something you love, something Mm -hmm. that you enjoy, something that you're having, that you're helping others with and be able to make some, you know, if good money, the potential to make great money, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, no, it is. No, I mean, that you're describing a great business model. I mean, that is, I think, why I said earlier, fitness is one that I enjoy because I think you have a direct, you know, you're interacting directly with people and seeing results, right? And yep. and clearly all, like you said, Americans, the, the numbers are out. We need to be in better shape. Um, but so just, just in, in that thinking of franchisees, you know, and, and I appreciate your time today. And as we, as we wrap things up, um, it, it, you know, when you were talking about those franchisees over these years of talking to lots of candidates and working with lots of franchisees and seeing how they, they develop, is there something either you're looking for in equality or an attribute that you say, yeah, that's one of the key ones. Or is there something you make sure you train to? But what is that? Could you share something that you just say, this is an ingredient. If you want to start a business or one like this, especially, yep. this really helps. What, what would that be? What would that ingredient well, you know, be? People a lot of times will say, they'll ask, they'll ask us, you know, what differentiates you from other gyms? And honestly, it's the people piece. It is absolutely the people piece. And um, we want our gyms to be like the cheers of the gym space where, you know, where our franchisees and and, and, and not all of our franchisees work in the gym day to day, especially, you know, Jerry, Jerry Pugh's got 21 locations. He can't be in a gym every day. But um, but the people that you hire, we want them to truly have that connection with the members, you know, where, where they know they know the first name of the member and they know that the that, 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 that he's married and has three kids and works at the post office or what, or whatever. And the member knows the team and we yeah. truly want those service friendly oriented people. Um, you know, where, when you, when someone walks into our gym, they really do feel warm and welcome, you know, and that's, that's, the, that's where we've put a, a tremendous amount of emphasis is on building the, on building great teams we offer incredible training. Um, we don't charge our franchisees or their team members. We don't charge them anything to come to the training because the better we can train them and the better we can help them do a great job within their gyms, it's going to make it's it's going to be a win-win across the board. It's going to be a win for the franchisee. It's going to be a win for the members, and of course, it's going to be a win for 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 for, for corporate because a, a club that does well, it's a win all the way across the board. So yeah. really. Um, the people piece, and yeah. and this is a business that you you've got to like people. You've got to yeah. enjoy interacting and talking to people because that's important in this business. And so, I would say, and we've we've met, we've had people come to Discovery Day that really that's just not their they they're looking at this more of a business to maybe get in from the outside in and not really really be involved in it. Mm-hmm. And this is a mm-hmm. business to really do well, you know, you've got to, I, we want people, 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 people that mm-hmm. are comfortable, you know, interacting with other people and people that are, you know, that are truly passionate about health and fitness. I mean, you don't have to be a bodybuilder, but mm-hmm. there's something to say about people who are gym people and who know how good it feels to work out regularly. And like, mm-hmm. you know, I've, I, I teach group fitness classes today. I've been teaching since college and I still teach three times a week. I'm a gym person and um yeah. and I can't imagine not being a gym person. And I, I, I was in the gym space for American Fitness Center selling memberships. And yeah. actually when I got out of college, I got into management and then became then I was the area manager for them. So I was in very, very involved in every aspect of the of the gym business. Mm-hmm. And selling memberships wasn't really selling because I truly believed in it. I truly, you know, I felt everyone that I ever spoke to 
it was clear that I was, it was not a sales tool. I was not selling. I was, um, you know, trying to get them on board to do something. You know, the hardest, I always would say the hardest thing about joining a club is joining a club. Once you're yeah. there, easy thing is join now. And then let's get this into your regular routine. And so, and that's where I say, if you have that connection with your members, um, it really is, it's a beautiful thing. It's a, it's, it's like a, it's like a big family, you know, in your, yeah. in your gym, it's, it's, there's, some, there's nothing like it. Honestly, there's nothing yeah. like it. It's a special connection and you feel good. You feel good. You enjoy the the camaraderie with, um, with the members and with your team members and with your other franchisees and with, with corporate. And, um, and we're all there to help all of us be better mm-hmm. and do better, yeah. including yeah. our members. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, in these kinds of business models, everything you're describing really helps uh, folks. I mean, if I knew the folks at my gym, right, and I've been a member of different gyms, but the closer you are and the more you realize they know you, more value it is for you. And the more, again, to your point earlier, no one's going to cancel a membership ever. Like, you know, just that little bit of personal touch. Hi, Terry. And, How are you today? Great to see you. Or <laughs> where have you been? Just right. those little we things. Know you. I mean, people, yeah. they're like, oh my gosh, she realized I haven't been here in a month or whatever. You know, it really, it's, it, it goes far. And that's, you know, I, I think what separates my brand from, you know, other brands that are available that are out there truly is it's the people business too. The people that are on my team. And this is every aspect, every, every, from Sophia who, answers the phone and welcomes new franchisees into our office right when they walk in to our franchise business consultants who work with our franchisees to our marketing team, to our VP, our, our franchise operations team, franchise support team, Greg Mauer. He's, he's our VP of education. He's the smartest guy I know. Um, but the thing that we all have, Randy Trotter, who's our senior VP of, of real estate, the thing that we all have is we're all very passionate about health, fitness and helping others. And um, yeah. Yeah. and the the support we provide truly is unwavering support. And I think when franchisees see this, and it, you know, we don't just talk it; we walk it. We walk the walk. We talk the talk. They then try to duplicate that in their gyms, and that goes a long way, you know, yeah. to help to make their gym successful. So it's a it's a it's a cool business. Awesome, awesome. Well, could you do us a favor and share a website where folks can learn more? Uh, I with would the love. To I would love to. So our website is workatanytime.com. And the cool thing about, and then you click on it, uh, own a gym. And the cool thing about that whole, the whole friend of section are there, there's tons of videos that are on our website and they are franchisee videos and they're unscripted. Um, and it's just franchisees talking about all the different aspects of our business and owning a franchise and the support and the real estate and the training and and everything, but you're getting to hear firsthand from franchisees who've done exactly what you potentially are thinking about doing. And it's just, it's just, it's great information. And then, you know, not only do you get to hear the videos, but part of our due diligence is actually talking to franchisees, you know, truly jumping on a phone call or a team's call or whatever. And, um, and, and learning, you know, learning about our business, our industry, our brand, our franchise, and, you know, why they may want to be, be, become a part of it. Wow, that sounds great. Sounds like yeah, like you were saying earlier, there's plenty online to to get uh, to research and get started and and uh, does a lot of our work for us when we can share that with folks up front. So, uh, but that's very helpful uh, to know that's there. I, I really appreciate your time today, Terry. It's been great having you on board. Again, I encourage people to check out Work Out Anytime and, uh, and bye for now. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed being on your show as well. And I look forward to coming back. You got it. Thanks, Terry. Thank you.